<clears throat> Good morning, folks. Look who joined us back here. We got Isaac back. <laughs> Isaac, welcome back to Green Pastures, and uh, how was your uh, Christmas vacation? Yeah, I'm happy to be back. It was good. I got a lot of time with family and friends. Got to see a bunch of people and, you know, enjoy the holidays and everything. It was good. Um, but I'm happy to be back into a routine and back into, into the swing of things. Um, yeah. Looks you like I brought the cold weather back with me <laughs> from the north. So we got some ice here and it's some snow. That makes it fun to deal with. Yeah. But you know. You also brought a little friend back I with did. you. I did. I brought a little little pup. Got a new pup that I'm gonna be <laughs> raising up. His name's uh, I named him Rucker after Rucker, Missouri. So <laughs> excited to see how he turns out. Yeah. Well, boy, he is a cute little booger. What yeah. what breed is he again? He's uh, Aussie crossed with uh, Border Collie Collie mix. So okay. He's got those three breeds in him. Um, Boy, he's he a... looks kind of blue merle ish but he's got some white on him. And mm -hmm. He's he's a little bugger. He's, yeah. He squealed a lot on the driveway. But <laughs> then he calmed down and, and kind of settled in, and, and it was fine. But. Well, Jan, Jan's going to be picking up uh, three uh, guard dog puppies on Wednesday that are like eight weeks old. So, you know, we're kind of strategizing. That might be work pretty good. Put him in with them. Go in with them for a little while and keep, have some playmates and everything. Yeah. Them. Gets a little bigger, so yeah, that's awesome. Well, this morning, uh, Isaac and I wanted to cover uh, unrolling hay versus putting hay in bale rings. And I go around the country and I still see, I still see people feeding in bale rings, and I'm like, boy, look at all that fertility stuck in that circle. Mm -hmm. And the cows are all mucked up and they're muddy and they've destroyed the landscape, and they're not growing any grass with the hay they're feeding because they're actually. It's more of a, a liability because mm -hmm. it's so thick and nasty in there that grass can't grow there. Yeah, you're taking an asset or what could be an asset on your farm and turning it into a liability by, yep. by doing that. You're concentrating all your nutrients. Mm -hmm. So, Isaac, we're backed up here with the Greg Judy bale unroller. Yep. And that's on a Honda uh, ATV. That is the uh, Rubicon. Is it what, 500cc? Yep, 500cc. And you can see... It's just got a boat winch, a geared boat winch on it with a strap hooked to a two inch ball. And so it doesn't matter what kind of conditions we get into, we can go unroll hay no matter what the landscape is or how muddy or whatever. Yep. And so the way you backed up to it, you made a video last year about the petting the cat method. So what would you call it? Petting the cat method. So you think of it when you're petting the cat, you know, you go from the head down to the tail and it's smooth, you know, the hair lays flat and it's, you know, it's an enjoyable experience for the cat. If you go the other way, you know, the cats don't like that as much. So you kind of think of that when you're backing up to the bale. So if you see the bale, you see how it's in a spiral? It, the spiral's turning this way and all the, the ends of the grass is poking this way. Yeah. So you go above the center and you pet the cat and that's the way, the cat's head is the way you want to unroll it. You so wanna you want to hook your unroller in the direction that you're combing that cat yeah or opposite you're combing the cat left to right you want the cat to the bale yeah. the, the cat the bale to be facing forward so if you're petting the bale you want it to be like a cat facing forward and that's the way you back up to it another way you know you his see head the cat like the cat's head would be over your here cat's to your right. head is facing towards the forward toward right. the forward okay another thing you know you, you see how it's it's unroll it's rolling up in a spiral like that yep you want it just to keep rolling that way if you go the other way it's going to unroll you know, thick. Each layer, each layer is going to come off. You know, in consecutive. Yep. This way, you're unrolling it, and so it's not the layers aren't coming off like a toilet paper roll. It's like chunks. It's like, it's like on. It's like rolling a toilet paper roll without unrolling it. Right? Yeah, and that's right. The way we like to do it because it flicks little pieces here and there. And, and it well, you and I, uh, Connor and um, David, are a little bit under the weather, so it's you and I this morning, mm -hmm. and we fed 320 head. In about ten minutes, mm -hmm. two bales. Two bales. Mm -hmm. Now they're they're getting some grass out there. There's a little bit of stockpile. I'm gonna make them clean up, but there wasn't enough in there for all day, and I could tell by looking at it. But I'll, I'll, we're gonna go out there. But I wanted to revisit, folks. If you've bought <clears throat> one of these bale unrollers, or if you unrolling, hay, I don't care how you're unrolling it. Use this petting the cat method. You stretch your hay out over a large area. You're gonna see in a minute. What we did let's go look at that mm -hmm. um it's actually quite impressive if you unroll it the other way it comes off so thick 
and either you're forced to either fork it out with pitchforks or you're going to kill out a lot of your grass. Right, because it's coming off like a foot thick. Yeah, and so doing this way it saves a ton of work. I noticed when I got, uh, I wasn't, I wasn't even done unrolling yet, and you were already done forking. Yeah. You just did a little bit. The first 20 feet were thick. The rest started, yep. it started to get into that pet the cat method. Yep. Well, folks, with pet the cat method, um, I actually got four wind rows, and these wind rows are long. They're 150, maybe 200 feet long. I had four four rows per bale. So there's eight wind rows out here on top of this ridge. I mean, we are covering it with manure, urine, hoof impact, hoof impact and the carbon. Where's the carbon coming from, Isaac? The bales. The bales. It's not waste. That's, that's, that's one of the bigger arguments. You know, people say, they debate, you know, you, well, if you, you put it out on the land, they're going to waste it. And you got to get out of that mindset that it's waste because it's not. If it doesn't feed your cattle, it's going to feed something. Right. And a lot of times that something that's feeding, which is the earthworms and the soil microbes, is going to do a lot more for your land and for your, you know, your your profitability and your fertility than even the cattle will. Yes. So you can't think of it as waste. Let, let's walk down through these wind rows here and just look at the cattle. Um, you know, the other thing beautiful about this, Isaac, you want to talk a little bit about the dominant cows and the lesser ones. Yeah. What happens in a situation like this when you unroll it? Right, everybody gets a bite to eat. You see this cow there, 194 with the horns? She's one of the top cows in the herd and she's getting to eat. You see this calf here? He's one of the bottom in the herd and he's getting a chance to eat. Every animal in here is getting a bite and because there's enough room for them to all spread out. If we had two bales and, and bale rings, there'd be 24 cows eating at one time. And That's it. fill up and then the next level of dominant cows and those little guys wouldn't get a chance to eat any hay. They'd be, they'd yep. be starving. You'd have some that are doing fine some that are just you know they'll just starve yeah you'd have in order to feed this many head with bail rings you'd probably have to put out say 12 like that. <laughs> probably like 20 30 bales oh. you know and yeah 320 head, head. And everything to have a bite to eat well if you just did 10 10 that's 32 bales yeah if you got 10 head on a yeah. bale, it'd be 32 bales. Yeah, My let's goodness. Just say it said 30 bale rings. Yeah, th 30 bale board. rings. Whereas this, we fed all 320 in, in like I said, 10, 20 minutes. Let's, let's walk down through there and look at, uh, I mean, everything's just standing eating. Well, and there's even room for more. You know, we could. But I think people are going to look at that and they're going to go, but they're standing on their head and they're not going to eat it all. Yep, because it's it's waste, <laughs> but it's not waste. You gotta you gotta get yourselves out of that mindset. Well, look at that little fat bull right there. Yeah, and he had butte. Yep, and he's full. Everything's full in here. Yeah, they, they're all getting full of food. Yeah. Wherever there's hay, there's something eating. Oh, you can see that ridge too down there. Yeah, there there's the ridge that David and well, the first day Connor was here, but David and I worked on that for two days, and boy, I mean, you can see the difference. I mean, they you just can see the brush yep. in front of it, and then after that, there's just nothing. Nothing just trampled everything. Trampled everything on the ground, and the amount of uh, cow pies and you know manure pads and stuff. Yep, looks like a pepper. Like you sprinkle. Well, Isaac, we, we don't have any shade on this ridge on the top of it. Mm -hmm. What do you think about keeping that honey locust right there? I think it's a good idea. We've picked it's out, got, some but of it's them got thorns here. on it. What do you say about that? Just an anti-itch uh, mechanism <laughs> keeps them from destroying the trees. They're not gonna, they're not gonna rub on it, but they'll stand under it for shade. And it makes a good shade. Yeah, you there. could argue that yeah, they're they're dropping thorns that the cattle are walking on, but we don't really run into any issues with that. We've got. I've never trees. pulled the thorn out yeah. of a cow hoof ever in my life. Yeah, I mean, they, the nice thing about a honey locust thorn too is it doesn't have barbs. They step on it, they're gonna feel it, and they're gonna take their foot off and. Yep. You know, they can pull it out. Yep. Their foot. And that honey locust will grow about three to four foot a year. Yeah. Well, that's what three years. That's no two brush years. That's two years. Two years no brush hog, and that's already yep. six. And six half foot. Feet tall. Yeah, over six foot tall. Yeah. I'm excited. We need to make sure we tie flags on them. Yeah. There's, we can. There's a bunch there's of them in too here. Too many in here for yep. what we need. But. So we'll, we'll we'll go through here and tie flags on our best ones, and then that way when I brush hog it, I'll make sure to go around those. Yep. I know some of y'all are having uh, nightmares thinking about using the honey locust for shade, yeah. but Mother Nature planted it here and it's growing well. well. Another thing is this time of year, you know, they're slowly dropping pods. 
Yes. So you're getting extra feed benefit. There was a study done by, uh, what's his name? Is it the guy in Pennsylvania? Do you remember his name? Yeah. Uh, Andrew? No. No. He's going to kill me for forgetting his name. Me too. He's actually, uh, well, he, anyway. Yeah. He, he's, done, <laughs> he's done some work on it to where he calculated out the, uh, the pods that they're dropping. And it's like, it's, it's a lot of it's weight 50 feed. For a, a, if you can get a honey locust every 50 foot on a per acre basis, and they all are producing pods, it's equal to 52 bushel of corn yeah. per acre per year just for feed. forage feed. Mm -hmm. That's huge. And that's and you're still growing grass underneath. Oh it. yeah, because yeah. that's another benefit. They've got the dappled shade. Yeah. To where they you know, the grass can grow right up to the base of the tree because it's letting enough sunlight through the leaves that the grass can grow. But it's also giving the relief from the sun, so the grass actually grows better. Right. Plus, it's fixing nitrogen. So it's there's a lot of benefits to it. We've talked about it before. You're right. That's <laughs> right. Fans. That's right. But look at this. You got all the cows. Do y'all see anything in there fighting each other? I mean, the little guys, they're all getting them a bite. The big cows, they're eating. The bulls are eating. I mean, it's just, it's kind of a calm, yeah. calm, uh, situa peaceful situation here. They're all relaxed and not stressed about getting a bite. But let, let's go over here on the side of the hill. This is the side that had the best grass on it. Yeah. I wanted to show people why we only unrolled two. A full feeding for 320 head, folks. 1,200 pound bales. We're looking at about 250 animal units. An uh, animal unit is 1,000 pounds. Um, we're needing to feed three in the morning, three at night, and they clean them up pretty well. But look at this. You can see that there's still plenty of, yeah. plenty of forage left over. I mean, that's not all over the place, but there's enough enough of it there's an, yeah a bale worth of feed yeah there's still ice and the there's still some ice and snow on the ground but today's supposed to hit 46 mm -hmm. and so all this ice and snow will be gone and these cows will be grazing but look how spread out they are Isaac yeah you talk about putting some impact down this morning yep I mean, look at that the whole side of the ridge yep it's always cool to see it's like a buffet line you know everything's yep. lined up along the bales there's well, no, there's no better, or I mean, it's very easy to get good impact when you're unrolling hay like this. Like, yep. throughout the year, it's harder to tighten them down sometimes because you don't want to hurt animal performance. But this time of year, you know, the hay, they're getting all they know what to eat, and then you're also getting that animal density, that animal impact. That's right. Um, <coughs> and their animal demands are not as high because they're not nursing a fresh new calf. Yep. So... People are starting to calve around here. They call this early spring calving in January. Yeah. <laughs> that's not early spring calving. That's winter calving. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But the other thing we didn't talk about, Isaac, uh, the other advantage of unrolling hay versus bale ring also is when you unroll it is the seed. Oh, yeah. The yeah. seed in that bale is just being spread everywhere. When you're unrolling it, you can see it. It's like a big cloud of dust and seed and everything that's, you know, making its way and then settling in. And then when the cattle come in there and eat, their hooves are trampling it down, too. Right. So, so there's about 40 to $50 of nutrients in every bale, folks. If you put them in a ring, you're only going to affect a 25-foot area, and you're going to affect it in a negative way. Mm -hmm. Here, you're taking that same bale of hay, and you're going to grow a ton of grass next year. Just a ton. So if you've got a farm that's got a lot of broom sedge on it, that gnarly red-looking grass that animals will not touch... If you could get your hands on some bales and unroll it across that broom sedge, the next year you'll be able to tell right where you unrolled it at. The broom sedge is going to be very weakened, and in a couple of years, it'll be gone. So that's what this was. This whole farm right here, this whole ridge was nothing but broom sedge when Jan and I leased it back in 2001. So it's come a long ways. So you've got both benefits here. You've got the benefit of the land, you know, with, with the unrolling it you're getting benefits in the land but then also in the feeding time you've got the benefit of being able to feed everything at the same time you know that's right and just give out just what they need instead of having this place a bunch of extra hay out there yep which in turn maybe you could say actually waste more because the boss cows are getting extra and the you know the calves are getting less and so you, you know your your hay proportion isn't isn't evenly distributed across your herd right Whereas this situation everything's getting all they need to eat yep and then you know, what's left is feeding the soil yep 
What do you think about these cows though, Isaac? I mean, if you look at the size of them, most of them are in that 900 to 1,000 pound range. What if we had 1,400 pound cows in here? What do you think they'd look like? They'd be eating twice as much feed. They'd be, <laughs> they'd be pretty thin. Uh, there's, you know, there's, there's not one in here that'll go over 12. No. Um, no. And those, even those ones, they're starting to weed themselves out of the herd. The bigger yep. ones. Yeah. The smaller frame. But they, they can just keep weight on and nurse a calf through the winter on Kentucky 31 fescue. Yep. Um, and do, do well on it. Well, we're, we're excited the direction we're going um you know at the end of the year if you're not making any money uh doing what you're doing you need to stop doing what you're doing just stop just stop you can't keep can doing the same thing every year and expect a different result uh i had guys that have doubled their herd got more land and kept doing exactly what they're doing and all they did was they lost more money at a higher scale stop just stop anyway i'm gonna go ahead and sign off here uh for those of you all new to the channel, hit that subscribe button on the way out. If you're interested in one of those great Judy Balin rollers, go to our website, greenpasturesfarm.net. And we are shipping those nationwide now. We have a shipper, and uh, we can get you a quote for what the shipping will be. Everyone have a good one, and uh, we'll see you all down the road next time.